your Toyota has a check engine light and the VSC and traction control lights are flashing, you're probably stuck in Lint mode. So this video is for the Tundra, Sequoia, Land Cruiser, 4Runner, etc. and some Lexus models. I'll be showing you a breakdown of how to disassemble and repair this problem for a couple hundred bucks. The secondary air pumps are located under the intake manifold on most newer 5.7 vehicles, but mine just so happens to be under the passenger fender well. The same part, same system too. They pump air into the injection valves for a few minutes during startup. Those air injection valves then open up and pump air into the exhaust right before the cat during startup. This helps lower your emissions. Once this system goes into a failed mode, you get the check engine light and the system goes into limp mode. You're not able to drive over 50-60 miles an hour on the highway. So let's go ahead and tear into it and get started. Okay, so there's four T25 torques bolts that hold this housing together and as you can see here once you get it apart this is full of water black nasty water just a poor design and this is actually a rubber it's not a metal it's like a rubber cup that houses this DC motor The top half of this housing comes off as well and leaks water. And this feels like it's free, so maybe it's a matter of corrosion. Okay, so I built this old jump block out of a couple of Prius hybrid cells. It's about 12 volts, so I'm going to feed 12 volts into this plug. Before I put these air pumps back in here, what I did is I actually drilled a tiny little hole. Drilled a tiny little hole in each one of them so they can drain water. Shouldn't have this problem happen again. Pretty easy. You got 12 millimeter nut here, one up under here, and then two back, one right there, one behind that. Just for the sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and cut out all the wasted expense removing the uh, 10 millimeter bolts and nuts to get this intake manifold off. It's pretty straightforward if you've ever taken off hoses, your PCV hose, your purge valve, vacuum lines. It's pretty straightforward. It took about an hour to get this off. Just got this intake manifold out. and took off the valves that are back here causing this code the secondary air pump injection valves and I'll show those and I took these apart and you can see here this has got a flap it's supposed to close and you can clearly see how that's open see that yep and allowing blowback to come through here and then look at the bottom side of that there's like a seal Golly. you want that okay <laughs> what do you think about that that's nasty that's nasty isn't it yeah look i can't get it to focus too well <laughs> oh wait a wash. minute here. let's get that off your hand he's gonna have to lick that off <laughs> there we go yeah, you can see that rubber seal is like pooched out. And you'll notice this vacuum hose. Yeah. It's supposed to be plugged into the back, like right here, and it's, it's broke off. Like there's a big hunking harness, engine harness that comes across there. Yeah. Okay, so this old valve assembly, when it sets back in here, you're going to notice this harness is just really tight up against the back side of this vacuum line. And it's it's so tight it typically wants to break off this nipple like this side is on the, the forward side which is great but this one 
seen on the back side with this big old heavy harness up against it it you can see it's just worn this it's worn this line in two and broke the nipple clean off the back side of this valve and if you're wanting to know the part number for this assembly see if I can focus here it's 25701-38060 the new assembly I got shows part number 25701-38064 so it must be a superseded part number but I don't want to mess with the back of that vacuum hose breaking off again so I zip tied a piece of foam rubber across the back side of this so you can kind of tell it gives it a little bit more support against the back side of that harness I don't want this to happen again and uh, have to dig that thing back out of there because this harness is so tight up against there so hopefully that will help prevent that problem okay I got everything put back together and one thing I do want to mention is you'll want to disconnect your battery post just so you can help clear that check engine light or another easy way is you can remove this uh, seven and a half amp fuse that says ECU B1 right there in the middle that's this little guy right here that'll clear your check engine light as well before you do your initial startup double check everything over make sure all your vacuum lines your hoses your throttle position sensor your map sensor make sure everything is plugged in one thing I will note about this map sensor is there's a harness you can buy online that splices in between these two. It's a little bitty module that somebody's created with a variable resistor in there and it actually fools this system so that it will keep it from going into limp mode. You'll still have a check engine light but you can actually drive the vehicle. It just blocks off that secondary air pump system and that can get you back on the road as well. I think it runs about 160 to 180 or something for that little kit. Alrighty. Looks like our lights are off. We'll fire it up. Looks like they're staying off. So I think we're doing good. We'll let her warm up before I take it out for a test drive. But thanks for watching. If you guys like this video, feel free to share it with someone you know. Or click subscribe and I might give you a back rub.